Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a winter storm that's going to be impacting parts of the northern plains into the Great Lakes and then back through into parts of the northeast. We're going to be dealing with some snow over especially the interior northeast, the Great Lakes, and again the northern plains. And then some of that heaviest snow will be centered over Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Uh, and we could even be seeing some snow get all the way down to the coast even though it will be light snow. Some snow is still possible there and we'll be talking about how that might be possible and we're going to be breaking down. Uh, the timing of this system and just discussing what could be happening this is about four to about six days out so there's still room for this to change and I would assume probably by Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday I'll have my snowfall forecast out uh, for this system most likely closer to Wednesday uh, would be a better date for my snowfall forecast at least for the northern plains from this system so Here's the current National Weather Service page. We have some winter weather advisories in effect for northern Mississippi after that big winter storm that went through portions of the southern plains. We also have some high wind watches in effect for parts of Montana and Wyoming, as well as uh, some high wind warnings in effect for parts of southern Oregon, and some flood watches in effect for western Oregon and western Washington with some winter storm warnings and winter storm uh, watches in effect for northern parts of of Washington State there. But other than that, it's actually a rather quiet uh, day in terms of watches and warnings. And after this system in the Southern Plains goes by uh, and it's almost ready to wrap up, uh, we're going to go into a drier stretch for about another two or three days before this next system, which is right now in the Pacific Northwest, comes out of the Pacific Northwest, goes into the Northern Plains, and then eventually moves into the Northeast. And that's going to become the system that we're going to talk about in today's video. So here's what the GFS is showing with this system. This would be by Wednesday morning uh, and we're looking at mostly rain and snow showers for uh, depending on your elevation mainly rain but some snow showers in the higher elevations for the northwest uh, and this is actually your system you can sort of see those isobars on the northern part of your screen right here that kind of line right there that is the start of that uh, low pressure right there which is by this point down in southern Alberta Canada and if we play this forward you continue to see that through the day on Wednesday that little air mass of energy energy uh, continues to head further to the east. Right now it would be in Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan or uh, into parts of central Canada there where you are looking at that low, uh, low pressure currently in effect and we are also looking at some rain and scattered snow showers moving through the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming by that point and then here would be by Thursday morning and let's switch over to the eastern U.S. view. Uh, we're looking at potentially some mixed precipitation. I think it's going to be a lot more snow than rain here that that you're seeing on the GFS again. The GFS has a very big warm bias, uh, and we saw that displayed in t in today's storm over the southern U.S., uh, and we've seen that in other storms where it really does a lot. Uh, it does warm up the system quite a lot. It really doesn't show that much, and it really weakens these storms. So we're also going to look at the European model and a couple other models, which I do agree with a lot more. Uh, I would expect a lot more of this precipitation that you see up here to be in the form of snowfall instead of uh, rainfall that you're seeing on your screen right now. Here to be by Thursday morning, you are seeing some of that switching over and maybe even some moderate or heavy snowfall. And also, I do think it's going to be more of a blanket of snow. I think it's going to be more widespread than what you're seeing right here on your screen. Uh, the GFS, again, does like to weaken and also warm up these systems quite a lot. So here would be by Thursday evening and you're looking at some of that snow and rain uh, generally moving through Wisconsin and Michigan. It's out of Minnesota by this point. We're seeing an actually rather impressive low pressure system up near uh, northwest, the northwestern UP of Michigan and northeastern Minnesota in that area uh, where you have a 989 millibar low pressure system that's actually quite strong and we're dealing with some rather strong winds coming out of uh, the northwest for a lot of these areas. So you are going to have some rather chilly air move through you're going to have some warmer air on that eastern side, so you might actually be dealing with some snow down into Iowa, South Dakota, uh, and northern Illinois while you're dealing with actually some rain mixing in there for Michigan. Uh, so that might be a dynamic that we have to look at because we are going to be pulling in some warmer air and also dragging down some colder air as well. And that might be interesting to look at when we're at seeing what actually happens with the system. This would be by Friday morning, and we're dealing with that system dropping down. We have some scattered snow showers over the northern plains we see a blanket of snow move through into portions of the great lakes 
We also see a secondary low pressure system down here in Georgia trying to form. Uh, we have that main low pressure system up here. Uh, and then we have, I believe that's another one up in uh, central Canada. And that is bringing down a big frontal system that's going to be moving eastward. And with that, it'll have some very cold air behind it. And that's actually the start of your cold air mass that's going to be overtaking soon. Uh, behind that, you're going to have some very cold air. You're going to have some fairly warm air actually for this time of year ahead of this system. Uh, and then on that back backside you might even see a quick change over to snow in some of those areas along the east coast here to be by saturday morning we're dealing with the low pressure uh over portions of uh, pennsylvania and new jersey so we might be pulling in again more of that warmer air so you might be dealing with rain in northern upstate new york northern vermont while you're dealing with snow in maryland northern virginia and central pennsylvania and i wouldn't be surprised if even some of this down here does turn into snow uh, just because you're going to be pulling in so much cold air rapidly that you might actually get a bit of uh, snow even further to the south with some of that rain still impacting areas like New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and parts of northern New England as well. Northern Maine will likely stay mostly snow out of the system, though it will still probably be closer to 32 degrees in those areas. Then behind that system, you do see a little bit of lake effect takeover, so you might be dealing with uh, some scattered rain or snow showers, mainly snow showers, over the Ohio Valley as we get through uh, Saturday. And then here to be by Saturday night into Sunday morning, and this is really heading out by that point. So here's what the European model is showing. We're dealing with uh, some scattered rain or snow showers through portions of Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and then back through into British Columbia, Alberta, and also into uh, Saskatchewan in Canada. We're looking at, again, some of those rain and snow showers uh, moving through. And then here's what the European model does with this. By Thursday morning, we're dealing with this dipping into the northern plains, and we're dealing with this a lot more in the form of snow than rain uh, the GFS was a lot more rain and warmer uh, and again that the GFS does have that warmer bias so you can kind of uh, make this maybe four or five degrees cooler and you would definitely see a lot more snow than what you were seeing on the GFS. And you're looking at uh, potentially a widespread moderate snowfall for northern Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota as well. And then you continue to see the system dip further to the south by Thursday morning. Uh, we're dealing with already some chillier air through uh, the eastern United States, wedging into the Appalachians and into the northeast. We're also dealing with more cold air behind the system right here uh, with more of that warmer air being pulled in. And this red line right here, which is actually rather important when you're you're looking at this this is your 32 degree line so anywhere north and west of here is where you're looking uh, at more of your uh, below 32 degree temperatures and you can see I just outlined it here and you're looking at potentially uh, again what I was talking about where that warm air is being pulled uh, further to the north you see a little column here uh, to the east of the low pressure where you have that uh, above 32 degree temperatures and then right to the west of there to the west of the low pressure system you're dealing with those below 32 degree temperatures so that's going to be an interesting dynamic that we have to pay attention for uh, with this system here would be by Friday morning here's by the afternoon hours on Friday and then through Friday evening we're dealing with a widespread uh, snowfall for much of the Great Lakes and then we're dealing with this system trying to head further to the east we see mainly rain for the east coast and the uh, European model what it's doing is basically dragging in some of that drier air on the backside so that's a little bit of a dry slot that you see right through this area here so if that were to be filled in with precipitation you would most likely see this cold air move in a bit quicker and that might switch over some of this to snowfall right here and we'll have to see exactly how that plays out it's going to be uh, a tricky forecast uh, for a lot of these areas in terms of do you actually get below low about 34 or 33 degrees in order to get some of that snowfall and then you see the system move further to the north and to the east dragging in some more of that colder air on the back side with some more of that warmer air on the uh, the eastern side of the system where you're still probably in the uh, 40s and 50s in some of these areas and then behind that system of course you go back into the 30s and even into the 20s for a lot of those areas and you can definitely see that colder air if you're watching that 32 degree line look at that that gets into northern Florida the Louisiana eastern Texas and then back through into northern Texas so we definitely go into a bit of a, a colder pattern after that system does go by so here's what the European model is showing in terms of snowfall uh, and we're looking at in those grays under an inch to two inches two to six inches in the blues six to ten inches in the purples ten to about twenty inches in the pinks and you can probably uh, take these amounts and cut them in half uh, and that would actually be a, a rather good estimate because these do kind of overestimate as we're this far out uh, 
uh, models do like to kind of overhype these systems a little bit so cut these in half you'll get a pretty good estimate and the better thing that I like to use this for and I've mentioned this quite a lot on my channel it's not really how much snowfall I'm not really looking at oh northeastern North Dakota is getting 19 inches northern Minnesota is getting 14 inches on this model that's not important because that's gonna of course change with time what's important is to see uh, and this uh, this tool is actually rather useful when you're looking at where does the footprint of that heaviest snowfall look like uh, it's setting up and right now I'm looking at eastern the eastern Dakotas northern Minnesota northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan that's where I'm seeing the most snowfall and that's where I'm seeing the most concentrated snowfall and then you see of course those lighter amounts further to the south and to the east that's where I'm looking at potentially some lighter totals not exactly how much snowfall just yet but just uh, just kind of signifying that it's probably going to be on the lighter side of things not as heavy and then whatever you see down in the southern states, that's from what's happening today into tomorrow morning. Uh, so that's really not uh, not associated with this system. Here's what the GFS is showing for those snow totals. And you can see we have, again, that concentration over the northern plains. And then you see those more scattered amounts back through the northeast. And you can see that the GFS also has some of those heavier amounts along the interior northeast than what you saw on the European model. So it's definitely thinking that probably in some of those higher elevation regions where you get a bit of uh, elevation elevation there that's where you're going to get some of those higher totals and then here to be what the Canadian model is showing and this is a model that brings that snow all the way down to the coast now I will warn you the Canadian model does have a bit of a uh, colder bias unlike the GFS which has that warmer bias so uh, it usually does either overhype these systems in terms of snowfall or it winds them up so much that it ends up dragging in more cold air on that backside than than is actually present uh, and that would actually and then the, then what would actually happen on uh, we see this a lot with the hurricane season where the Canadian model always brings up these category four and five hurricanes that don't end up happening uh, and we're seeing a little bit of that where it winds up the low pressure system up in Quebec so much that it's bringing colder air rushing in on that backside and it you know, ends up uh, switching some of that over for the northeast coast so that's not out of the question it's still a possibility and I'll continue watching it although I wouldn't get your hopes up too much because that could of course change we're only about uh, four to five days out so there is still uh, room for this to change although don't expect any major or uh, huge changes in the forecast and then again you have that concentration over the northern plains although the Canadian model shifts that concentration further to the south and then just one more model that, that I want to look at. Here's the Korean model. Uh, just to give you another perspective, we're looking at mainly that concentration over Wisconsin and Michigan. Uh, not so much into the Dakotas or Minnesota there, uh, which is definitely interesting, and we'll have to see how that pans out. Exactly where in the Northern Plains uh, or the Great Lakes this heaviest snowfall sets up is where uh, is what I'm really looking at right now. Uh, the threat of a northeast snowfall is also there, and that's also something that I'm tracking. But the biggest thing where you're going to have more... Uh, more impacts is going to be do you see uh, under an inch of snowfall or six inches in Minnesota or North Dakota let's say so there is a lot of stuff that still can change and I will definitely be watching the forecast for you guys and I'll definitely be updating you guys a couple more times uh, throughout this week just giving you an update on the system so that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye